Hi everyone, I'm James Proton. I'd like to give a special thank you to our sponsors for the podcast. Hi, my name is Kelsey Candelor, owner of Candelor's Barking Beauties, where our salon is your salon. We have five convenient locations, no appointment needed. All breeds welcome. Any size dog. We are open Tuesday through Saturday from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. We have five convenient locations, Elizabeth, White Oak, Finleyville, Monongahela, and Irwin. Love to have you visit us. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. We're, uh, we're here at the Energy Innovation Center uh, in the Covestro Bright Room uh, for the closing event of the Really Big Faces exhibit uh, by artist Tom Mosser. And with me, our first interview tonight, we're going we're gonna to do something a little different. We're going to talk to some folks, uh, some really big faces as they come in. And, and with me to my left is my brother, my good friend, Mayor Ed Ganey of the city of Pittsburgh and uh, a, a newly minted, soon to be unveiled, really big face, which is... Uh, yeah, can't, can't wait to see it, kind of curious what it look like. Don't get that handsome <laughs> mug up on the, right. on, the big, on, the, on the canvas. Make me look good, that's all, make me look well, good. He right? will, he, he's, he's an amazing dude. And I, I, I'm glad we had a chance to finally sit down and talk. Uh, like I said, we've known each other for, for a good while now, and uh, you know, we have a lot of respect for you, my a friend, and, and you, how brother. you do things, and you know, when you first told me that you were going to run for mayor, um, I mean, that was, that hit me. It hit me hard because I knew, knowing you, I knew you were the guy, right? And you were the guy that could, that could do this and, and could take this city to the next level, to, the, to take it forward to the next generation. That's the thing. You are a generational mayor, okay? What, what does that mean to you? You know, generational mayor, and, and I think that's an interesting concept. Um, when you said, I, I often tell people that I see my, my administration as the bridge to tomorrow. Um, I don't think that going forward you will have um, another mayor. Um, th the next mayor to come after me will be from a younger generation. Right. Um, I think that you see the city getting younger. And I think in that there was a bridge between yesterday and today mm -hmm. that leads into the future. And that's how I see my administration. Mm -hmm. It's one that is that bridging the gap between what was yesterday, what is today, and what tomorrow will bring. Sure, sure. And, and you know, beyond, beyond the fact, you know, the, the obvious fact everybody wants to talk about, you're the first black mayor in 250 plus years in Pittsburgh. But even more than that, what you bring to the table, okay, with your background, born and raised, you're a city guy, yeah. right? Born and raised, you, you understand government. Now, politics, government, which is a huge thing, right? Because this city doesn't need a politician sitting in that chair, yeah. right? You know, the one thing that I said when I, I ran for, for office is that, you know, I didn't really learn how to politic in this city. I learned how to politic outside the city. When I was right. growing up, I never met a politician. So I really couldn't have a political mentor because mm -hmm. I didn't know one. I never had one knock on my door, call my house. I didn't live in the community where they came to. Right. And so for me, the first politician I met was a gentleman named Mayor Kurt Smoke in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, as I began to grow in politics, I had Another politician from Philadelphia, Mike Nutter, tell me that um, I know him well. Yeah. yeah, Mike Nutter tell me that um, my office is on, my office is downtown, but my work is in the neighborhoods. And a lot of the politicians that I've seen that's outside huge. of this region, that's huge. You know, that's the style that I adopted. Those mayors that are actually out in the neighborhood, and as you stated earlier, letting their presence be felt and allowing their presence to affect change. Right. And that's what we've been doing since we came in. Excellent, excellent. That's that's fantastic, man. You know, one I wanted to talk to you a little bit about too. Uh, I understand that you were a, 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 a hooper of some some renown, <laughs> huh? Yeah, I had a little bit of game with me back in the day. You know, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's gone. Um, you know, I was playing up at the state maybe two years ago, and you know, end up tearing the rotator cuff. No way. Yeah. So you know, I knew right then and there. It was well, time it, to retire. It, but it comes, man. Yeah. It, it comes up. It sneaks up on you. Yeah, basketball was a passion. Basketball and football. But I played basketball. It's always been a great passion. Yeah, that's 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 my game. I got that from my dad. He yeah. he played in college, and you know I coached and all those different. You know, like, we had some pretty good. Yeah, we had some pretty good teams. Yeah. But um, so one thing, if you could tell 
you know, the millions and millions of people that are watching this right now, okay. right? If you get one message, what is your, from here, not here, not, yeah. not, the, yeah. not, what, not what, they, what they expect you to say, from here, what's, what's, what's your message to the city of Pittsburgh? I mean, you know, it's that simple. Just pour love on everybody you see every day. There you go. You know, I think that we focus on our problems so much, not giving the problems that we have the respect that our problems deserve. You know, I often tell people without a problem, there's no promise. There you go. And you have to have a problem in order to grow. That's you know, exactly I think right. that a lot of people look at problems as something that hand, hand, handcuffs them, that holds them back. Right. But without a problem, you really can't develop. You really can't sharpen your skill. And so look at every problem, not in a way that you want, you want to feel the pain of the problem, but you want to experience the love of the problem. Right. The love that you can share with the next generation and why pain is so important when it comes to growth. Yep. and the ability to learn from it in a way that teaches other people that right. you don't have to run from your problem. If you want to heal, reveal. And in healing that, you get to teach other people exactly how to get to the road they want to be on. Excellent, excellent. Listen, I want to thank you, my brother, for, for, for joining me. We're, change starts right here, man. Change starts, change right, starts here. right here. Because I thank you for having me, too. You know, listen, when I say generational mayor, yeah. that's because I know who's watching you. Thank you. Right? Yeah. I know who's watching you. And yeah. and guess what? You know, I live down in Westmoreland County, yeah. right? It's not just city. It's not it, there, there are no boundaries. Right. There are no boundaries, right. Right. Right? right? So there's the 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 people that come next, the group that comes next, right? And think about this. The I think what is it? Gen Z. I don't I can't keep up with all those letters, but those 15 to 25 year olds, my man Nick, he, he fits yeah. in that. They are going to have as great an impact in our future as the greatest generation did Absolutely. in our past, right? And those are the people that are watching you, my friend. Yeah, you know, I tell people all the time that the way that people see the city in this region is the young people. Right. And so you got to have young people around you in order to see the future. Yep. If you don't have no young people around you, you can't see the future. It's not in my eyes. My eyes can only navigate that way now because right. I'm no longer considered the next generation. I'm the generation that's present. That's but exactly right. But the next right. generation... The way they see this region is the way the region will go. Absolutely. Well, I thank you, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Joining us now is Adam Crawley from 93.7 The Fan. And um, I basically just crushed his hopes and dreams. And I told him that um, I didn't listen to local radio, and I, 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 I'm regretting it. Uh, I, I'm sorry. No, That's we're all really I can happy say. to hear I, I'm that. I'm really sorry. Yeah, we love when people say that they're not listening to local radio anymore. Well, you know, and, and, and honestly, I know Paul Alexander, and like I said, um, you know, all you got to do is look at him on Facebook, and I'm, I'm sure he just copies all your shows and just puts them out there. So. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Paul is because he doesn't have a, any creative ability. Right, he's, he's more of a stealer. Yeah, than a yeah. pirate. Right. Or I guess those are both kind of the same thing. Both kind of the same they thing. But same but thing. I'm sure he copies everything you do because that's just. You know, yeah. That's why why strain your eyes when you could play your eyes? I, there you go. You there know? you go. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you What do you do? Talk me through ninety three point seven. Yeah, I produce the fan morning show okay. with Colin Dunlap, Chris Mack. We're adding Doran Dickerson, former Pitt football player. Sure, sure. On August first, great guys. Wake up every day at three. Nice. Trudge in there, but then when we all get together. But you love what you do. We have a great time. Absolutely. You love what you do, and I'm messing with you. I am familiar with your show. Um, so. How long have you been in radio? How long have you done this? Real radio, I mean, probably 12 years now, where I, I intern at a different station across the street, and then I worked there <laughs> for 10 years, nine of which were full-time, and then okay. yeah, it was time to skedaddle. Okay. Time to move on. You can leave it at that. Get a big check to go across the street. Bigger check than before. <laughs> well, that's that's what yeah. it's all about, right? Yeah. That's what it's all about. I, I've done that myself. So, so radio guy, do you do you? What do you think about podcasting and radio? Right? There are those out there that think podcasting is actually going to replace radio at some point. What are your thoughts on that? It's a great question. I think the most important thing in the radio industry is the content that you produce for live on air. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to repackage it so that it can be downloaded as a podcast. Okay. And I think even in your on-air programming, the old way, the old mechanics of how you did it, I think right. you almost need to change them now to where you're super serving your podcast audience off the air, but you're almost right. doing a live podcast on the air. So I, I think it's a fine line, but I think radio can survive and thrive 
so long as you embrace the podcast instead of push it away and make it a separate thing. You can make it one and the same. Sure. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do you guys do that on, at your show? Yeah, big time. Big time. Put up a bunch of different podcasts every day. The hours, segment by segment, the interviews. You produce it? Little bits, yes. Okay. And the way I've always said it is, I think we're doing right now, being live on the radio, you're just recording a podcast. It's right. just people can hear you while you're recording well, the podcast. A, yeah, right. But the number of people who listen to the podcast compared to the people who listen to terrestrial radio, I mean, I'd say... For us, the podcast numbers continue to rise and rise. Good. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. I, I love it. So that means having you on here and talking to me, ours are going to go up, right? So, yeah. So somebody other than my mom's going to watch this. Well, I'll tell you, I went on with our afternoon show the other day, and I had a text from the host, Andrew Filipponi. He says, Crowley, we're going to have you on at 2.30, but we're not going to promote it. And I said, if I were having me on, I wouldn't promote it either. <laughs> So I would give the same advice to you. <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna to promote the heck out of this because you actually are probably the most famous guest we've ever had. You just had the mayor on. Mayor who? I mean, Good listen, point. I mean, yeah, seriously. Good point. Look at him over there. He's posing with a picture. I mean, he's not even paying attention. He doesn't, you know, come on. He's just come glad on. handing. Yeah, he's not. I Shaking mean, babies, kissing he hands. Doesn't have, he doesn't have a cool hat. That's true. I mean, seriously. So what do you think of this? Tell me about being a really big face. What, what, do you, what's, what's all, what does that mean to you? Well, it's an honor for me just to have been asked by Tom because I think he's incredible. How you know Tom? I know him. He used to listen to my old show on the old station. Oh, so he's an old radio guy. He's an old radio fan. He's, he said, and I think this is BS, but he said that we got him through the pandemic. He just wanted to paint somebody else's head. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah probably. But he's, probably. the way he views the world is so fascinating to me. Yeah. Everything is viewed through the lens of his creative mind. It's just, it's remarkable. And it's amazing how that mind works, you know, because he told me, he literally, he just unveiled Mayor Ganey's portrait behind us, but he told me that he literally painted it with a basketball. Yeah. I mean, who does that? Who thinks to ever do that? Who would even think about it? Yeah. They invent these things called brushes. If my kid or my grandkids dunk their basketball in paint, I'd be smacking them. Yes. You know, I mean, what are you thinking? Yes. You know, it, that, that kind of creativity, I can't relate to. You know, and that, it's just amazing. There's brushes. Yeah. There's spray paint. For a reason. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Let me take this football. <laughs> that's what he did with mine. It was a West Virginia, that's where I went to school, West Virginia oh, okay. football, and he just... Rolled it all over the dark. Yeah, thing. there you go. It's there crazy. you go. I, I I don't want to make you jealous, but I um I happen to know personally uh, the last four Mountaineers. Really? Yes. Yes. I I mean it sounds a little like I'm showing off right now, but Have I'm you really fired not. The musket? It's no, they wouldn't let me touch. Well, yeah. no, I'm not allowed to touch the equipment. I'm not allowed to shoot the gun. So, but but <laughs> I I have uh, and I went to a function. A uh, good friend of mine. It's a true story was the mayor of, uh, is the mayor of Fallensby, West Virginia. Okay. And w one year when they did their community days, the uh, Mountaineer was the uh, guest speaker. Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't shoot the gun inside, though. Didn't shoot the musket. When they do it in the basketball arena, it's terrifying. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the concrete. It's frightening. Yeah. It's frightening. Is your family here with you tonight? They are. They're right over there. My sister's gorging herself with nachos. My mom is drinking again. See, uh, I joke, I kid. But no, she really is drinking. We just again. we just got you on camera eating nachos and drinking beer. It's okay though. Nobody watches this. It's it's not a big deal. <laughs> we couldn't even keep your family interested. This is what the this is this is a problem. Free food and drink trumps all. Well, it does. It, it does. does. Yeah. But uh, thank you for joining us. It's nice to meet you. Do you do you listen to him on the radio? See, that's a mom. My mom's the only person watch, actually watching this. And that's because I make her. She doesn't really want to, but I make her do it. So it's like, you know, she, do I have to do this again? What you need to do is you need to, like, farm out those bots. There you go. That can give you all the fake likes. That's nice. Yeah, monetize I never, that. I never even thought See? about that. There you go. Look, he's not even paying attention. He's, Look, not. he's on his phone. We lost him. We lost the family. My sister's choking. <laughs> Wait a minute. This has gone completely off the rails. Okay, the producer's not paying attention. Your family's ignoring us. Look, not only they, they're, they're intentionally ignoring us. They are. 
and my dad's over there and he's observing them, not observing us, and shouting at them. Typical. Dad, dad, could you, can you get them under control a little bit? What, I, I don't get it. I mean, it's like, I, I know. Listen, I'm a dad, I get it. You're off the hook. This bunch over here, I, I'm gonna tell you, I don't know. Cut them off. Yeah, wow. How many of those have you had, Mom? <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Always They're stirring awesome. the pot. They are awesome. Well, see, listen, you, you can sit here and look. You come from good people, man. That's, that's, that's amazing. You trying to get me to compliment them? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. No, so, are, are you a local guy? You, you from yeah, here? I grew up in Mount Lebanon. Uh, my dad from um, Penn Hills. My mom from Uniontown. Oh, so. she's from down my neck of the woods. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I live in Bel Vernon. Oh, okay. That's yeah. my cousin who's best man at my wedding lives in Bel Vernon right now. Is that right? Yeah. Excellent. We That's ain't going anywhere. Nah, well, you know what? I've been here. It's very funny how parochial we are here because I grew up in Shawlery, right? Just across the Monongahela River from Bel Vernon, right? You can, you can see it from <laughs> here. It's, like, it's right there. So, 17, I moved out. I went to school, came back. Moved to Bel Vernon. I've been in Bel Vernon for 40 years. Yeah. Okay. But when people talk to me, they say, oh, yeah, that's Jim. He's, he's from Shaw. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I've had five kids go through the school district. I, I, I'm on grandchildren now. You know. And you know what I found out that really annoys me? I have nine kids, nine grandkids. Well, what, what, probably, well, half a dozen in Bel Vernon schools. I get no break on my taxes at all. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, that's not right. Listen, we still live in Mount Lebanon, so you're, oh, you're no. preaching to the crowd. I'm, better, I'm better off. Yeah, yeah. that's good. That's, 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 that's pretty high end. Changing. It's a great community, though. Oh, it is. Wonderful we have a community. daughter, two and a half years old. Do you? Great place to live. Yeah. Congratulations. What's her yeah. name? Nora. Oh, I met Nora. You did. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. She's sprinting around out. Well, she just left. But. Thank God she looks like her mom. Thank you. No kidding. I mean, I'm serious. I'm, 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 listen, on radio. I'm, I'm blessed. That's exactly right. But no, she's very cute. Oh, my God. Is she sweet? Yes. And she's two and a half? Yes. She but kicks our butt. My youngest granddaughter is two and a half. So I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. So, yeah. They just get faster. Yeah. And you get slower. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Inverse. So tell me, tell me to, in, in, in parting, in closing here, what, what, what do, you, do you think that this type of exhibit, this is a one of a kind thing, right? Um, you know, local guy, and I know he hates that local guy thing because he is a national, ar sure nationally is. recognized artist, yeah. but he's one of us, right? So what do, you, what do you think it means to, first to you, but also to, to the greater community to have something like this in our city? I almost, when I came the, to the first exhibit and I saw the people here, I mean, they're, I had chills. Yeah. Because everything that the world has really been through, but just thinking about it locally, everything that we've been through with the pandemic and for him to have this idea that carries through to unmask Pittsburgh at the end of this thing. Right. I mean, it's special because there are so many stories worth telling here. Right. And think about the diversity of the just of the subjects, right? There's a dog. There's a dog. Okay, I mean, you get no no more diverse than that. You can't right. you can't you can't top that. That's as good as it gets. And you're right about that, though. I mean, that was one of the things that struck me, and I think it's important to think of Pittsburgh that way because I don't I don't know that people do. I, I don't think I think people look at us as old school ethnic, you know, old country that kind yeah. of thing. And and you know, I I love it when people come in when I have people come in from from other places for you know for work and you know clients partners whatever and they've never been here before, the first thing they always say is they can't believe how green it is here. How many yeah. trees, and it's like, it doesn't look like a city. You, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, we're blessed. We're blessed to live here. We are. And I don't know that we ever went away, but I'd say, I mean, Pittsburgh is back if it ever left. Um, I, I think mean, we've had our moments. Yeah. But you know what? I don't think I don't think we had peaks and valleys. I think but we've we've had gradual mm -hmm. dips. But I agree with you. I think you know wherever we have been, we're back where we need to be. Yeah. And I think Mayor Ganey is a is a big part of that. And I, I mentioned to him, and we we talked about him being a generational mayor, right? And I think he is that because he's serving for the generation that's coming next, right? Your daughter, my grandchildren. Yeah. Right. And that's the kind of that's the imp the kind of impact that those young people need for 
us. Now, you're, you're my kid's age, you're probably younger than my kids, but it, it, that's the kind of impact that we need those children, those coming next to have. We need them to, to see that impact, to see somebody that will stand up and raise their hand, right? You can't do it alone. That's exactly right. And I think Ed is the man for the job. Right, and, and you know, everybody has a role, right? What you guys right. are doing on your morning show, right? You're promoting Pittsburgh. You're entertaining, right? But you're promoting Pittsburgh. You're putting the city and the region out there in a positive light. And you do it very well. I think positivity is important too. I mean, not just because we're in the morning, but sports are supposed to be fun. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. Right. You're so exactly right. It's not fire tomlin all the time or <laughs> can you believe the Pirates traded this guy? You're allowed to have fun with sports. And it doesn't have to be yeah. your identity either, and I think we walk that fine line. And that's good. That's good because sometimes we get too wrapped up in that identity, oh. right? You know, and there are, there are I go to other cities and there are people who like, where are you from? Pittsburgh. Oh, I hate you guys. Cause, yeah. You know, because it's right. the Steelers, right? How could you, know, you hate me? I'm a, I, well, I'm a delight. I doubt that anybody ever says that to you. Me, I'm easy. It, it, it's easy. I'm an old ball guy. I got, <laughs> I got you know, it, it's, it's easy not to like me. But, you know, so I have to work at it. I, I got to, you know, I have to like, okay, listen, how much, how much is it going to take you? I'll, I'll, I'll pay you to just like be nice to me. You know, so, 20 bucks. So, well, usually it takes more than that. But, um, you know, it's, uh, but it's fun. So, well, listen, I mean, thank you so much. It's great to oh, meet no, you. Oh, no, thank talk you. you. Really appreciate on. it. And I, I, this is fantastic, man. Is I, he I'm, looking yet? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, he, you woke Nick up, so you must be doing something eh, right. You know, he just probably figured it was time to wrap up. No, wait a minute. Nasir, you, you have producers. You're a producer. Do you honestly believe that my producer was on his phone, not even paying attention to what we're talking about? I bet you he was just looking up topics. He was gonna shoot. He was gonna text you, maybe print them out, hand them to you. It's like pulling teeth over here with me. He's just trying to give nah, you a hand. Nothing. Nothing. Ah, well then he's nothing. So, yeah. Probably on Instagram. Probably, yeah. yeah. Right. Snapchat, he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing, you know. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate no, it. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Appreciate you. Joining us now is the one and only Andy Petcash. And Andy is, uh, is the, the, the craftsman, uh, creator of all of the easels, the frames, uh, just about everything. Uh, and, and let's be honest, um, you really are the star of the show. Tom's uh, just taking, no, he's just no, riding no, your no, coattails, no, you know. Oh, I see what we're doing. Yeah, Tom, you know, this is my show really, yeah. No. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. Thank How, you, I appreciate it. I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. This is my first podcast. Is so, it really? Yep, uh, welcome, go, welcome. But I'm, I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, like I love the, the format. I love better. It. You're better than him. Yeah, All right. the only that's the only this difference is an opportunity between, for me. The only difference between Rogan and us is we're we're just better. Okay. Simple as that. It's quality. I, yeah. I quality. appreciate quality. He, he does all that, but we're, we're better. You're talking to the real stars. That's why yeah. I'm here. That, well, right. that's Thank why you. you're here. Thank right? you. I mean, it, right. Sh- listen. You guys yeah. recognize talent. Exactly. I, I appreciate exactly. that. Exactly. So, you, you, uh, <laughs> that was quite an undertaking what you've done here. We talked yeah. a little bit about it earlier, but tell, tell, tell the, us a little bit about what the process was. You said this actually started before COVID. Totally, yeah. So uh, this was back in uh, 2019, I think. Um, and what ended up happening was Tom was, he was really into these faces. It's like a passion project. Mm-hmm. And so he had all the, the canvases and um, he needed the frames assembled. And so he called me, had me do it. It was very boring, but it was like I got him and set you build up. You furniture and things. You, you're, furniture, that's what yep, you do. yep. So it's just, you know, you, you have that eye for, for building stuff. And yeah, that's, that's right. what he needed, right. So yeah. I did my part. And then two years later, after COVID hit, he wanted this big show. And so he contacts me and he tells me he wants 50 of them. And I thought it was a joke because <laughs> who wants 50, right? That was just insane. And so, but I got him 50 of them. And then, because with the supply chain stuff, it was hard to source the, the stretcher bars, right? And yeah. so I just went to Home Depot and I bought them out of everything, man. They would see me coming and like, I, they knew me by name, you know, I'd have to go from one Home Depot to the next because I buy awesome. all their stuff. Yeah, right. that's awesome. That's a lot of material. That is, yeah. I mean, so. this is, there's so much that goes into something like this. I mean, how, how, how long did it, would it take you to, to build one of those frames? About two and a half hours. Uh, yeah, and, and that was because I was able to get them all, you know, assembly line, right? right? Like doing the quality or the quantity, I made like a jig and then you just put everything in the jig, bam, 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 Henry Ford it, and then you're done. Nice, yeah. that's a ton of work. That man. is that's a, a ton, ton of work. work. 
So what, what got you into woodworking and, and building furniture? What, Honest, is that something you've always done as, as a hobby? No, or? I did uh, shop class in middle school. I was terrified of like the machines. I was like a video game kid. I did nothing physical. I played no sports. I was not <laughs> that guy. But um, I, I had a house. I owned my own house in uh, 2012. And the wow. cabinets were just junk. And so I went to Lowe's. We, were, we got a quote on the cabinets. And they were like, yeah, $15,000. And I was like, for, for cabinets? He's like, yep. I was like, they're wooden yeah. boxes. And he's like, yep, 15000 So I was like, no, I'll go on Craigslist. I got, uh, I, you know, out in the country, you can get table saws for dirt cheap. Planer, joiner, table saw, YouTube. I was able to make all my own cabinets. Where's, so, yeah, that was it. Where's Terry? <laughs> you got to talk oh, to no, him. Oh, no, no, no. The people here, Wait, you can do that. They're no, like, no, I know. Well, you just told, like, right. well, eight people. But eight people, still, yeah. You know, so they're, they're all going to be calling you. Right. Well, that's the thing, though, is when you're doing it for yourself, it's really cheap. But, like, you right. know, when you're doing it for other people, it's like... Yeah, because yeah. you have no, to. No, the reason I said that is because she's 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 a, a handy person. She, oh, really? She, she does, what she does she do? Oh, she's got table saws. She's got all that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. She's actually a pharmacy tech by trade, but she, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff yeah, she does. Yeah, hey, after yeah. hours, we can be whoever we want to be. It's that's exactly right. right. But yeah, she's got a couple table saws. She's got all kind of stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, and you stuff. never, the, like, does she just keep growing her shop? Because oh, yeah. there's never, yeah. Yeah. you never have enough tools. You yeah. never have enough clamps. That's you never exactly know. Exactly right. Yep. And that's another thing. That's more stuff I'm not allowed to touch next it no, is, no, 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 no. You can, you can touch it. You no, just... no, no, no. Listen, I'm not even allowed to cut the grass. She's got this fancy <laughs> Honda lawnmower. I, yeah, no, 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 because I don't get the line straight. What about like scissors? Would she trust you with scissors? No. To... Okay. Yeah. She gives me the left-handed scissors, and I'm right-handed, uh, so I can't hurt anything. She sabotages you. Yeah. She sets yeah. you up for failure. That's right. not all right. right. So, so you a local guy? You, you local guy? Uh, I tried being local. Um, I came here, so in, in 2018, I moved to Pittsburgh for a little from? bit. State College. State oh, College. Yeah, that's my hometown. Okay. That's where I'm nice. born and raised. Yep. Um, so I've been Pittsburgh adjacent my whole life, I tell people, because my, my grandparents are from Grass Flat. So, like, when we grew up and we went up there, they say yins, they say warsh. They, it's all <laughs> of the stuff. It was a coal mining town, you <laughs> yeah, know? So, yeah. 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 Um, that so is we very get, cool. We got a little bit of the culture by osmosis, you know? There you go. Yeah. That's no, awesome, but I love man. Listen, you, you, you've got a skill. You have a talent that is is every bit as impressive as what Tom does. It's, you know, art is art, right? Yes. Whether yes. it's paint on a canvas or oh, whether yeah. it's wood, whatever it is. You know, I, um, I I have a lot of respect for that, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank stopping you. by and talking Thank to you. Thank you. I appreciate it great that. Meeting. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, stick and around and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk again some more. All right. Sounds good. I like yeah. that. Thanks, man. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Okay, joining us now is Jen Avashevic, and uh, Jen is one of the really big faces. She's right over here. Um, I'm looking right at her, and I'm very disappointed that she doesn't actually have purple hair like the painting, but um, that's okay. I'll get over it. So, Jen, thank you for sit taking a minute, Thanks sitting down and talking me. with us. My pleasure. So, how did what, how did this all happen with the with the really big faces? Well, I, it's kind of a long story, but uh, my son actually was. A big face first. He's sort of a medium face. He's smaller than okay, the okay. So he was actually a medium face first. Okay. And um, and then as I just got to know Tom, he said, you know, he learned a little bit more about me and just you said, need you need to, to be too. a big face. You need so, to do it too. Cool. Yeah. So what? Tell me, tell me about Luke. How how did that? How did this this all work for him? How did this impact him? Um, I don't know. He's he's pretty excited to be Is part he? of it. Yeah. Yeah, he came on the opening night and okay. he really liked it. He enjoyed it, and uh, good, yeah, he's non-speaking, so he okay. points to letters on a letter board to, uh -huh. okay. and spells out everything he wants to say. So, um, yeah, he was that's really awesome. excited to be here. That is awesome. Letting us that, know. That's that's awesome. So, what is it, what does this mean to you? How does this how does this touch you? We have you have your son here, and yeah. and, and all of this, and, and, and this is something that he'll never forget. No, and, it's and pretty well, amazing to be a part of it. Him, so. Yeah, it's it's very flattering. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see yourself. It's a it's a very big face. <laughs> it is. Yeah, there's no doubt it's, about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just you know, and I love to support Tom too, and I appreciate Good. that you know he's he's really a, a got a big heart. He and, does. He does. He's he's yeah. a true connector. You know, we were here last week and, and did the podcast, and, and that's why he invited us back. But we came down here to interview him and wound up interviewing actually four big faces, really big faces. And I think he maybe talked about himself for two minutes in an hour and a half, you know? <laughs> so it was, but you could tell, and, and that's the first I ever met him in person. I knew him on social media. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a lot of, of the people that I, that I am 
friends with on social media that I've never met. Right. You know, so of course. That, that happens, right? Yes. But um, but no, this is really cool. And, and honestly, he did shoot justice because <laughs> that's you with purple yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so which they is they kind really of cool. frown upon the purple hair in court. So most lawyers <laughs> don't have purple hair. But some do, I guess. But uh, so, what kind yeah. of law do you practice? I do criminal defense right now. I'm a okay. former prosecutor, though. I did that for, uh, I don't know, almost 15 years. Probably. You're in Allegheny County? Yes. Okay. And then I went out on my own in 2013 and opened okay. up my own private practice. Very so good. I just work for myself. And um, yeah, only criminal defense. That's pretty much it. That's all okay. I know. That's all I've done yeah. since I finished law school. So even law school? in law school, I worked for a criminal defense attorney. So oh, okay. that is all I know. I went to Pitt oh, okay. law school. Okay, very and, good. Uh, yeah, I love it though. It's really interesting and it's challenging. Well, it, it, it has to be a difficult and, and stressful career, right? I get that, but it has to be very rewarding too. It is, you know? and I, I dedicate a lot of my practice to representing individuals with autism that are charged with crimes. I do a lot of that okay. pro bono also. Um, not necessarily because they can't afford it, but I just think it's the right thing to do. So, yeah. um, you know, there's a large population of people who are just turning 18, sure. um, hitting the adult world, right. and, you know, they can get themselves into some trouble, but when they're not even doing anything bad. Well, yeah, it's, so, it's, you know, police, it's something that's misunderstood. It is. Right, and it, it, it really is. I have one of my granddaughters is, that was diagnosed in the spectrum and uh, with Asperger's, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, she's 17 now and has come a very, very long way, but it, it's, it, it's completely and totally misunderstood. What people look at her and, and, and certain things, it's like, and, and I'm not really sure why it's still so misunderstood because there's been a lot of research. There's a lot of really great organizations out there doing some great things. You know, um, I've supported Austin Speaks ever since she was, you know, for little. And I have a very dear friend, uh, Chris Buckley, um, who was a writer and, 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 and uh, a reporter. And his son, Timmy, is uh, non speaking autistic and he's in his 30s now. And, um, Chris, he, Timmy and Chris run marathons together, oh, right, to, awesome. to raise money <laughs> yeah. for, for autism. So, that's great. But I'm, I'm not really sure why that kind of misconception still happens. But Yeah, and there, I mean, there's a lot more exposure now just yeah. because there is such a large population of people mm -hmm. now. Um, but I've, I try to make people more aware. I've done some educational trainings for okay. police officers to know what to look for when they're dealing with someone who has some special needs. That's important, right. On the flip side, I've done some educational trainings for people who are um, on the spectrum or mm -hmm. living with autism and their families to, you know, okay. how can you make yourself safe if you're encountered right. by, but even if someone calls, you know, an ambulance, that the first responders right. need to know, you know. Right, right. I think it's particularly, for me, because I practice criminal defense with um, the police, it's important to have make sure that they're trained because sure. you know for us if you well for a police officer if someone's not making eye contact with you right it usually so, shows someone's it's guilty a it's or a trigger it's you know it's they're up to something right but for right. someone living with autism that's what they do that's they don't they, do. they won't right. look at you in the face in right. the eyes so it's something important that's why you know a lot that's why i take these cases because a lot yeah. of times there, there is just a misunderstanding that right you know, out of, well, that's out of amazing. <laughs> that is totally amazing. I, I, thank you for, for for everything you do, and thanks for joining us and, and saying hello. Thanks and, for having me. No, thank you it was very nice much. Nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you as well. Enjoy your night. You too, too. Thanks. This is uh, okay. I, I'm I'm, uh, I'm having a moment here because joining me right now is uh, is a friend of mine, Paul Martino. Um, I'm sure everybody, at least the Pittsburghers, know that name, and probably from. Other places well, as well. At least well. KDKA viewers should know that name. KDKA I viewers, I, I promise you that that all three of the the local channels, they all everybody knows your name. You you did some good stuff, young man. You're Thank very you for kind. coming Thank by you. And, and talking with us. What a great event this is. This is phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, this is you know this is Pittsburgh, right? Right. This is us. Right. You know, this is one of our own doing something that has never been done before anyplace else. Right, right. And, I, and he's hoping it spreads across the country, and I, I think it will. I think it will too. I mean, look how great this is. Yeah. I mean, you know, people were enjoying themselves, and, and the art itself is so impressive. The art's impressive, but what I really enjoy about it are the bios. Yeah. Because even people I know, I didn't know that about them. Right, you know, right. He, he really did a great presentation. Yeah, he absolutely. And you know, the diversity of not only the, of the subjects, Right. If you look at the diversity and the style and the way he did his things, but 
I mean, you've got all races. You've got men. You've got women. You have a golden retriever, and right? A, a couple it's, of Italian guys too. There so you go. Know. There you go. Who knew? Yeah. He snuck in. <laughs> so how did how did you get involved with it? How did you become a really big face? <clears throat> well, I am not totally sure, but I think my wife Joy pushed for it. She's here. Where is she? And, oh, she's lovely life and she's there. with Nancy Mossert, the, Tom's, Tom's sister. sister. I think Nancy put a word in for me. Okay. So that's okay. what happened. Very. So you were nominated, and Nancy, and you won. And Nancy Mosser, of course, is the famous casting director. Yes. Yes. In Pittsburgh, anytime a yeah. movie comes to town, she's. Uh, She's getting jobs for folks. It's great. That is that is awesome. That is amazing. I'm looking forward to talking to her because we've been kicking around with Tom uh, the idea of kind of doing a um, low budget probably because, you know, money's tight, but doing a, a, a documentary, okay, which is very simple, would follow this because you, you know this because you, you, you were a storyteller for a very long time. Right. That's what you did, right? When you, when you were on the news, you were telling people stories. We have so many interesting and diverse and compelling stories here in the Pittsburgh region, right. right? So many people that are doing cool things that people need to know about, right? So, and that's really what started this podcast is that we wanted to tell interesting stories of people that you people maybe just didn't know, right? So we've been kicking that around. So we're going to talk to Nancy. I'd like to get you involved with that. Absolutely. I love telling stories. Yeah, and well, you're, you're and good that's at That's what it. I always tell journalism students. Tell me a story. I don't right. want to hear what the police blotter said. Give me a story about these people. What's happening to their life now? That's storytelling. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Right? That's when you think about as long as there have been human beings on this planet, right? That's the one thing that has continued. Everything we know about what's come before us. Somebody told a story to somebody else and they kept moving it forward. Our history. Our now it's all, very history it's all on digits now. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right? That is exactly right. Well, listen, I don't want to keep you, but I'm, thank you so much for coming by and saying hello. All right. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Thanks for having me on. Um, I, I don't get on the air much anymore. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so all much, right. my friend. Thanks. Good luck Always to you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, we're back. Joining us now is Jill Farrar, a uh, tremendous photographer and one of the newest really big faces who we haven't actually seen yet. She's looking right over our shoulder here. But, um, and Jill was on the podcast, the original podcast we did last week, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that. Took some photos for us. That was awesome. So it's good to see you again. So tell what, what are you excited? I'm, I'm beyond excited. A little <laughs> A little nervous, but such an honor to be here amongst all of these faces and Tom's tremendous artwork. And it's just such a beautiful thing. Like it, it is. It's very humbling and also exciting. And as you move around the room and hear different people's stories about what they're contributing to the community, um, it's just it's a very unique experience. It's something that brings Pittsburgh to light in a right. whole different way. It's Absolutely. exciting. And this is uniquely Pittsburgh because this has never happened anywhere before, right? Mm. This is a one-of-a-kind show, and yes. I know he wants to take it to different cities and do different things, but, and I think, I love what you just said because, you know, the art is front and center, obviously, that's the star of the show, but the stories are so cool, and, mm -hmm. and it, there's so much diversity, and, and it, it just, I was reading some of the some of the bios, and it's just it's amazing. Yeah, what you have are doing. big bios, and you have people's uh, faces who you recognize immediately. But then there's also these faces and these stories that are happening in like smaller parts or like corners right. of the community that are, you know, changing in their own way and contributing in these like fabulous ways. So right. it is very cool to see all of these stories and all of these faces. Yeah. And it would be wonderful to see it travel to different communities and inspire other cities They're or amazing. towns to right. bring faces to light because these are the people that are working really hard or like doing things or right. subtly sometimes doing things that make a town or a city what it is. So. That's exactly right. And you know, the, 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 the great thing about what you and I do, right? So you from a visual perspective and me from the spoken word, right? So we're doing the same thing. We're trying to to tell stories, to tell people stories, because every photograph you take tells a story, mm -hmm. right? As soon as you get somebody in your lens, you are responsible. That's a big responsibility to tell that person's story through pictures. You want me as the viewer to be able to to pull something out of that photograph. Yeah, it's super fun to uh, 
sort of capture or document a moment in time that's never going to happen again. And so what you want to do is create it in a light where when people look back at those images, they're taken to like this sort of positive moment, right? And they can, I mean, the trickery about photography is they can retell that split second in time any way they want it to be, right. but it's like right. the emotion and the feeling that it gives them and the, the way right. that it recreates that existence, I think is very cool. That is very cool. So what does, and I asked you this, I think last week, and we didn't really get a chance to dig into it, but but I'm very curious because, and I, and I think I mentioned to you that I have a, I have a granddaughter that's 14 who loves photography, right? Mm. And she said to me that she, the thing that got her attention the most as a, as a young amateur photographer is how different the subject looks through the lens than when she's just looking at that person. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. What, how does that, how does that, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? How does that work? Yeah, I think, um, well, with experience and the more time that you have behind the lens, the more you sort of um, can almost anticipate like these moments, right? In the yeah. moment that's important, that's about to happen. So you feel it building up and then right. you know when to actually snap the shutter and that's the moment, okay. right? And that's the key. So it's about, it's a lot about watching and listening and like feeling the room and then when things get exciting to know when, yeah. when is that moment gonna happen, which is really. And you do a lot of weddings, right? I do a lot of weddings, I do a lot of events. And weddings, listen, that's a lot of pressure, right? Especially Give that bride. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. she is going to keep that those photographs for the rest of her life. Yeah, I love you know? that. Yeah. And that's, that is so cool. But at the same time, it brings a lot of pressure because you, you have to pay attention to capture those moments, mm -hmm. right? Because in a wedding, not, but in a wedding reception in particular, yeah. it's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts, but the key is like it's about, um, they're not seeing the moving parts. So you want to capture what they're not sometimes witnessing to give them the full mm -hmm. aspect of the day. I mean, you've been married. It's like the day goes by so fast sometimes right. when you have right. a wedding and it's a blur, right? So it's such an um, amazing gift to be able to give people like these memories that they might vaguely remember yeah. or they remember it going by in like this blur, but to really capture those little moments and the reaction of their father or the reaction of their mom during like the mother and right, father dance right. or all of, like these little memories that make up any day or any event, I think is um, a true gift to be able to give people. And it is a gift. You're exactly yeah. right. I mean, it's a, it's a talent, but it's something that, well, let me ask you this. Do you think, I think artists, this kind of thing, okay, you're born with that ability, right? Mm. It, it, it needs to be developed but you're born with that ability. Yeah. And do you think that, that photography, that eye, is similar to that, or is that something that can be taught? I mean, I think that any, um, I think that any creative form can be taught and practiced, right? So even portraiture in its own way is something that maybe you're passionate about, but it doesn't really become your language until you do it over and over okay. and over again. Like Tom has obviously worked hard at his craft and honed it in. Um, and I think that in a way it's the same for photography, but the difference is that, and especially now with like phones and everything, take amazing pictures. Like it's accessible to mm -hmm. everybody and it's right. just as important if that image is blurry or like, um, uh, off center or yeah, whatever, right. not frame property properly. It's still capturing a moment in time, and it's still just as valuable as a professional sure. photograph might be. So, um, I think therein lies the difference that everybody is a photographer and everybody is capturing the right. world in their own right. It doesn't right. take a, a professional pro photographer to create amazing images and amazing memories everybody can do it and it's great for like kids too the to technology that is in <laughs> smartphones cam smartphone cameras now is amazing mm -hmm. it's totally amazing it's beautiful yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you can you can create and edit an image in your smartphone sometimes better than i can in my professional camera right so it's not necessarily 
about having the ability, it's having the vision and the passion for it right. that I think takes it to the next level. And like, you don't yeah. need a professional camera to do that. You can but do the average person it. doesn't have that vision, that eye, to mm -hmm. see those things. And I think, you know, y you miss a lot, mm -hmm. right? Because you, you know things, you see subtle things to look at, you'll see them before I do, if I even, if I ever do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'm pretty aware of stuff, but you're, with your training and your experience, you're going to see those little subtle nuances that you're going to pick up that otherwise would be missed, you know, regardless of the quality of the picture that a person could take. Yeah, I think... Th that's I the mean, benefit of a, of a professional. That's the benefit of hiring a professional photographer right. for an event because that's not what you want to do, right? You right. want to have somebody there capturing all those moments right. and knowing when to capture them and so far forth. Um, and even like artistic photography, which is like a side passion, is still like that's that's like taking moments in your everyday life and sometimes um, um, capturing them in a different sense. Right. Like maybe it, it's a dreamlike sense or a metaphorical sure. sense or whatever it is, right? And there is artistic value there, but not to say that it takes the same sort of um, day in and day out process that yeah, maybe right. creating these amazing paintings would do, sure. right? Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I think I think Audra wants to go look at more paintings. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so yes, much. I can't you. wait to see, for you to see your painting. It's, it's, I, I took a peek at it. It's really cool. I can't it's wait. It's really cool. Yeah, so yeah, thanks yeah. so much. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, so nice to see you again. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you for your Enjoy time. Enjoy the rest of your night. Okay, I'm, I'm very excited about, about our next guest that we're going to talk to. Uh, this young lady to my left is Andrea Echkaver. <laughs> you did it to me. You jinxed me. You jinxed me. Anyway, so we're, uh, we're joined by a, a tremendous young artist and, and one of the really big faces, uh, Andrea Echkaveria. Okay? And her parents. And Andrea is one of the really big faces, and she is also an artist in her own right. And I'm, I'm very curious, Andrea, how what, how, what brought you into art? You developed a passion for art. Was it at a very young age? Or is it something that you developed as you got older? She was nine or 10 when she started to, to, to paint. Okay. That is, that's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. So how long have you been painting? And what, what type of, of painting do you do? Do you do something similar to what Tom does? What or is it a paint? different? Is it the same as Tom or different? Oil, oil painting and watercolor. Just whatever. What's her favorite subject? It'd be What's landscapes, people. What's her favorite people? thing to paint? People animals. or animals or what? Both people and animals. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter though. You just yeah. love to paint. She, you just love to paint? Yes. That is yeah. awesome. That is awesome. So, is there this really big face, is this exhibit that, that Tom has put together, which you're a part of? What does this mean to you to be a part of something like this, an exhibit that is really a one of a kind exhibit that? They're all different. The art, it's different. What the people are different. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of yeah. diversity. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of different, different types of people. Different people, yes. And the way he paints is so different. Yeah, and the way that he paints is very different, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I never thought about until I met him trying to do a painting with a basketball or a football. I never thought about painting with a basketball or a football until he met Tom. Yes. <laughs> Different, right? Yeah. I'm come from the engineering world, from the analytical world, right? So I don't have a creative a drop of creative but in my entire body. Right? So he's not, he's not very creative. 
It's okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I, but I, I, so I'm very impressed with with artists and creativity and people who create. Really? Because it, it comes, really it comes from your heart. It comes from your heart. Yes. Yeah, because you can't think. Yeah. Yeah. Your heart too. <laughs> well, you do. Well, and, and and thank you for that. Thank you for that. And, <laughs> thank you for that. I um, because you know I think that great anything that is great that is created anything that's lasting okay has to come from inside. You can't think time. it. From inside, inside. Yeah, you agree? Right. Yes, she agrees. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, tell me a little bit, that Christian, how you've created a company. Right. Okay. Uh, Omni. Omni. Tell me a little bit about that because th that's that's I'm fascinated by this yeah. just in the little bit that I know. So so it started about two years ago. Okay. And uh, my wife said we need to help Andrea with the business of selling art. And uh, she suggested that we create just a, a, a web page. And as I started thinking about it, I said, well, that's just not going to do it. How am I going to help my daughter become a business person? How am I going to help her be a business person and sell her art? She cannot communicate. How is she going to reach out to potential buyers? So we started with an idea of creating technology that would allow her to communicate with buyers anywhere in the world. Okay. And that was the idea. How can she communicate using technology with a buyer anywhere and present her art so, okay. that, so the buyer can fall in love with her art? So that's what the company does. The company kind of okay. tries to mimic a, a, a physical visit but using technology uh, to sell art. That's what we do. Wow, that's amazing. So, does she does she paint? Does she have a studio, or how, how does she how does she? So she she has a studio. As a matter of fact, uh, Andrea and Tom have the same physical space, and they share uh, studio. And and it's interesting because Andrea Tom has been pretty much Andrea's mentor for the it's past, wonderful. what, 20 years. That is wonderful. Yeah. So, how much and, and, and in what way has Tom influenced her? I, I would say that if you look at uh, the techniques that Tom use, I think she's been able to incorporate a lot of those techniques. Um, I think that Tom is always uh, pushing her Mm -hmm. to kind of improve. I mean, Tom is a professional. Sure. <clears throat> and she's always pushing Andrea to be more creative, to try new techniques, to do things faster. And, you know, Andrea has one side of her where she's very detailed, okay. very detail-oriented, but she's learned to do kind of more abstract art with the help of Tom. What yeah. one kind of brought some, some more out of her. Right, right. Uh, Tom was really a, a big impetus for one of her collections. So, so she's painted a collection of art where she interprets what sound looks like because she cannot hear. Uh, that is, that, she, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that is, because that, it, now she's, she has been deaf since birth? Yes. So, Interpreting that is that's that's amazing. That's right. So, and I'm, I'm going to tell you a little, an interesting story okay. that you'll appreciate. Okay. So, so yeah. So she built a whole collection where okay. she expresses what sound looks like and what sound feels like. We, I'll tell you a little story. We we ha we went to an art show in Shady Side. Okay. Okay. And she had a booth in Shady Side. And a blind person came into her booth to look at art. She was with friends. She couldn't see anything. And I explained to her, to the blind person, that my daughter interprets sound. And that by touching her art, you can understand what sound looked like. 
and the blind person, so I kind of guided her hand, and I was explaining to her that a piece of art was a storm, that she had painted a piece of art to represent a storm. And I was explaining to her what part of the art was chaotic and what part of the art was calm to kind of represent the different phases of a storm. And it's very interesting because a blind person bought a piece Felt of art from her. Oh my goodness. Isn't that interesting? I mean, that's amazing. It's uh, you, you, you touch people's hearts. You touch not just visually putting beautiful art and great art, but you touch people's hearts. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's an incredible story. It Thank is. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, when you guys came over here, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Right, and I, I, I didn't want to stumble over anything, but this is this is this is totally amazing. And your relationship that I see you two have, obviously with Andrea, is is just spec amazing. And I, I'm I'm honored that you came over here and talked to us Thank you. and told us a little bit about her story and your story. Can you tell us what the website is? How can we go and, and look at Andrea's art? Right, if you go to Omni. Presenti. O M N I. O M N. If you type Omni Art Central, okay, you'll go to the website. Okay. If you Art Central, and then when you get there, you can just search for Andrea because we have about eighty different artists that we're helping. Okay. And uh, okay. but if you search for Andrea, you'll see her art. Where, Omni where Art is Central. The studio. Where do you guys? Where, where are you at right now? Where do you live? We live in Swickley. There's. Uh, you familiar with Cannonsburg, PA? Sure. There's a there's a coffee shop. It's called Chico Bacello. Okay? And it's in a building on the main street, on Pike Street in Cannonsburg. And I stop there a lot for a coffee. It's right. just a really, it's an amazing place. The people, the owners are wonderful people. But what they've done, they've created an art gallery within the coffee shop. It's, oh. it's very big. It's, it's as big as this room. Wow. And what they do, they sell the art because upstairs of the building is Arc Human Services, right? ARC, social, I, I forget what exactly it stands for, but it's people with disabilities. So they sell the art to benefit the, the art program. Oh, that's, that's... So they, they if she would be interested in trying, in doing something to give a back... A show, okay. So they would do that and she could display and sell it, you know, okay. whatever, right, you put right, the price right. on it, whatever right, it is. Right. And I think usually every four months or so, they rotate the art out. But um, I've had some friends who have put paintings in there and sold them for the, uh, for the, for, for the and charity. And what's the name of the place again? Chico Bocello. Chico Bocello, okay. Yeah, I remember it, that. It's wonderful people. Yeah. And it's a really, really cool place because it's, it's, it's artists donating their work. Well, I mean, they're, you know, they, and, and listen, there's there's some paintings in there that are have seventeen, eighteen, twenty thousand dollar prices. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <clears throat> so it's not like it's somebody paint paint by colors. You know I, what I mean? I'll so. tell you something, Jim. I have found that artists are pretty special people. Oh, they they amazing. have an incredible heart. The the experience that Nick and I have had here. So we we came here last Friday. Right. And we did a podcast with Tom and some of the some of the subjects and. This has had such a profound impact on me personally. Right, right. Um, you know, it's it's just been a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah, and this this just makes it everything. This is amazing. Yeah. And, and meeting your daughter, yeah, your, thank your wonderful you. daughter. Thank you for saying and that. You guys, it's thank just, you. No. It's just amazing. And we appreciate Andrea, it. Thank you so much for thank you. for talking with us and and spending a few moments with us and, and telling thank you. us your story. Yeah. And, we will definitely take a look and, um, right. you know, and, uh, at her at the website. Great, the thank you, That's thank you, wonderful. Jim. It's nice meeting you. You as well. Thank okay. you so much. Great, thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, we're back again, and joining us uh, at this moment, this very moment in time, is <laughs> this very special moment is a local actress Daisy Jade and her newly minted, brand spanking new fiance, who she never. Didn't bother telling me your name, which... I'm sorry. It's Perry. Perry. Her <laughs> newly minted, brand new, brand spanking new fiance, Perry. That's well, right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, James. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, that's great. 
this, you know what, this has been so cool. Um, you know, I'm not an art guy, right? I'm, I'm in the engineering business, so I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think that, that creative, you know? But when I, when I stumbled upon Tom and, and this whole thing through a friend, through a friend of mine, and um, we just kind of clicked and said, hey, let's just do the podcast down here. And, and um, I have met so many cool people. And as it turns out, there were several of my friends that were uh, that I was good friends with that, that were uh, really big faces too. Oh, so, good. So tell me about really big faces. Uh, you know, how did this how did this happen for you? Did you? I mean, you're a local local actress. I mean, did you have a relationship with Tom? Did you know Tom before this? Yeah. So I I've known Tom. Gosh, I don't even know for how many years. Um, I. My very first commercial when I was 17, um, his sister, Nancy Mosser, had cast me in. And so I, um, just throughout the years and seeing him out at events or different right. things like that, always knew about Mr. Tom Mosser, the awesome artist. And it's really cool because I um, also work on KDKA okay. as a uh, reporter for Pittsburgh Today Live, but I also co-host a sports fan show called Fan Nation. And um, knowing that Tom, First of all, is a super amazing artist, but he also was a pirate parrot for bajillion years. And by and all accounts, the pirate yes, parrot. He yes. was the best he, one. The best one, the most memorable one, I, I dare to say. Love you all, parrots, but you know, <laughs> I, I can't help but he was the man. And also that he is one of the few artists that I've ever heard of that actually incorporates sports equipment, yes. whether it's balls, you know, different things like that in his art, and I thought that was super cool. So we approached him for Fan Nation okay. because um, we did this segment called um, A Cave Painting where we offered it for a fan to find a, an art piece. And Tom, of course, totally was willing, was like, I will do it. He did this um, amazing painting and you know, a lucky fan got to find it. So we featured him on the show. But while I was there, I was looking around and there was only a handful, but he had started the Really Big Faces you know, mm -hmm. project already. Right. He had a few of them done already, and he just asked, hey, can I take your picture? Would you mind if, you know, if I had you? And I'm thinking to myself, who am I? Like, little old me, you know? And yeah. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. And so, to me, I mean, obviously, Tom is a beautiful artist. Like, these sure. portraits are it's totally beautiful. Amazing. They're, and they're so artsy and fun yeah. and colorful. And different. And it, so you, unique. And unique. Yeah, right, so right. unique. I mean, and he did 84 of them. This is insane. But the yeah. fact is, is that it was more than that. It was more about, at least when I, because I got to interview him for Pittsburgh Today Live. Sure. We featured it on the show. Um, and one thing that struck me that he was talking about was how... Like COVID, you know, everybody was kind of into their homes and, right, you know, into themselves. Right. And he said it was like one of the few ways he could meet people and connect with people during COVID. He would just, you know, one thing led to another by talking to one person. And so it's more about these people representing Pittsburgh that have done really amazing things. Sure. Um, you know, they're not all you know, people that are in the limelight sure. or, yeah, there, you know, there's, there's mayors lot, or anything more like that. people here that the average person is likely never yeah, heard of than anybody have, that would be like a celebrity or yeah, something like that. But you know. reading their cards, like some of these people. So many stories. Yeah, they're like, oh, they might be a lawyer, but they also, you know, like run a 5K and do these different things <laughs> right, or right. run this organization for children. Or mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's so fascinating to see um, just how different every single there's person. There's so much diversity. Yes. You know, and, yeah. and, it, and it's 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 not even racial or gender. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's a diversity, not only, it, it's it's just where you come from, the, the, the type of person and what they do and who right. they are. And these stories, the bi I was going around earlier and reading the bios and they're, I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. totally I, amazing. I, when I actually asked Tom, like, Tom, why did you pick me? You know, other than the fact that you know me and I happen to be there shooting and um, you know, maybe he was inspired or whatever. He always jokes about my dimples and <laughs> like how much he's like, those yeah. dimples, you know, they're easy to paint or whatever, <laughs> um, or easy to capture because they're just so cool. But um, one thing that he shared about me, I guess, was that he, he definitely loved the concept of including diverse people and uh -huh. I'm half Filipina. And so he just okay. thought it was cool just knowing my, he knows my sister very well. Sure. Um, and you know, he's like, yeah, I just wanted to also include a lot of people with really cool, unique, diverse backgrounds. Because even though I'm from Pittsburgh, this you know, all about them, right? Yeah, you know, I, I had a great conversation with them. I've been friends with the mayor for many years, and and we talked about how 
these types of conversations, okay, with people who are different, right? You know, I'm probably old enough to be both your father, okay? <laughs> but, and, and, you know, and, but, but at the end of the day, even that diversity in age, okay, having, having those conversations, having conversations with somebody that doesn't look like you, that doesn't think like you, yeah. that may have had a, a non-traditional path. Exactly. Right? That's that's how we're going to get better. Yeah. That's how we're going to go from good to great. Right. Yeah. That's how we're going to we're going to get where we need to be. And then even meeting these people who actually have a similarity to you that you may not have realized, like, right. oh, you know, you're really into. Um, I don't know, like splunking. Wow, I am too, or what? I don't know. Right. I don't no, know what, it, where that it, came from, right. but it's because the the, it's neat. the more we look past what we think, yes, it makes us different. We see that those very same things make us the same. Yes, right, absolutely. You know, Leonard Hammonds, right here. Leonard was uh, he was actually on the podcast, one of the first episodes that we did, uh, and he was chief of staff for Jake Wheatley when he was in, yeah. the, in the state house, yeah. and and. I, I just knew him socially. We had never met, right, in person. And I reached out to him on Facebook one day and I said, listen, dude, you got a great story. You're yeah. doing some really cool stuff. I do this podcast. Check it out. We had done a couple episodes by then. And I, I, I'd love to talk to you and have you tell your yeah. story. He drove all the way down to the middle of nowhere where I live down in, 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 you know, in, in, in the Mon Valley. Yeah. And we had a great conversation and we clicked. And he's like, he's like my little brother, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's just such a, a, an amazing young man. And he was very open and honest about his story. And I think that's the thing that, yes. that art, this art brings out of you, right? It yeah. brings out things that you normally aren't gonna put out there and, and share. Right? Yeah, and Tom definitely did share with me that a lot of these people, they had, you know, he had a chance to get to know them on a deeper level. He heard right. their stories, and a lot of them did involve something that was either, especially because we were living through a pandemic, you know, so a lot of people were going through different things, or they were nurses that were literally, you know, sure. dealing yeah. every single day with people that were struggling with it, or just sure. everybody kind of had this interesting, um, like, struggle, or, a, or even a, um, what am I trying to say? A victory, even, you know, like well, you know, where- uh, Everybody's dealing with something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everybody has overcome something in their life to get where they are. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you know you have something in your background, Perry. You as well. We all do. Right. That that was uh, an, an adversity, an obstacle that yeah. in some way you had to overcome. Right. Yeah. And you know what? I may sit here and say, oh, you know, oh, come on, that was just a little bitty thing. What are you talking about? But yeah. to you, it was Mount Everest. Yeah. Right? A big thing and, to and overcome. Vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah. Because everybody's different. Yeah. So now I have I have a very important question. <laughs> That's what everybody was wondering. I'm wondering that there's my mountain that we were just describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. See? Well, it is it, Perry? I, you know, what, what do you, what do you do? I'm a banker. I work in wealth management. Oh, okay, good uh, for you. Over in Swickley, okay, and, uh, good for, you. for a global bank. But I've uh, I've worked at BNY Mellon, uh, and uh, aside from a stint at Purdue, I've been here my whole life. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Well, listen, I I am. Really happy for you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, thank I wish you, you all of the best. And thank you. And listen, you know, Tom's a connector and, and, and I am too in a certain yeah. way. He came over here and he said, hey, Daisy's coming over to talk to you. You're going to love her. Oh, yeah. well, you know That's what? That's what you got. <laughs> okay, who's that? <laughs> I, I, and I have to say something about Tom. I mean, Tom, again, like you said, is a connector, but he's also so. I, I'm just throwing this out there because I love him so much. He's so encouraging too. Like yep. I, I, yep. I guess you can say that for me, he's even like a huge fan because he's he's like always encouraging me. Rah rah, you know, Daisy. Like during you know, because the Fan Nation show started during the pandemic, okay. and so one thing he shared with me was he, how inspired he was that he's known me as an actor for forever, you know, and he's like just to see like you know you end up you know hosting your own show and then now I'm on PTL and it, it's just like every time I see him he's like like I'm so happy for you I'm so proud of you I get so excited when I see you and I'm like oh my gosh you're hosting on TV now and like he's just such a great friend such a great person I hope everybody gets an opportunity to to meet him see his work I really hope his work ends up in the airport somehow we were kind of talking about that I don't well, know he it, you know. it really should be I mean he's been you know, it, it, we were talking about how he's one of us. He's a Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. Right? He's a local guy, and he yeah. said, and "He said, don't don't take this wrong, but I I don't like that, right? Because I mean, he's nationally recognized. Yes. Right. Yeah. But 
you, my, my, my new friend, are blessed to have a friend like that because, trust me, we I'm, all are. Yes. I'm, I'm an old dude, and I can tell you that friends like that don't come around very it's often. It's true. Right? It's true. Neither do Perry's. There's only so yeah. many Perry's out there. So. <laughs> That's right. That's why I said yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yes, thank I you appreciate so much, you coming. James. It's Tell been a pleasure. Over and talking to us. Perry, yeah. it's nice to meet you, nice young man. You too, I don't brother. mean to put you on a spot, but yeah. I wanted to, to congratulate you guys. I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much. And best yeah. of luck to you. Yeah. And, and enjoy the rest of your age. Yeah, as Tom says, you know, he was like, yeah, you have, you know, a really big rock to go with your really big face now. There so you nice. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a awesome. Tomism, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, that's exactly such a Tom right. thing to say. That and so exactly again, yeah, right. thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the, well, the thank time you. here. All right. I don't know how many, I don't know who's got left to talk to us or how many more. I, I don't know. We just, I don't you know, know, we talked about that on the way over. You know, we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. He just said, he set this all up. Yeah. Right? He said, we're ready. He sent me a picture of the table and he said, we're ready for you. That is said, so cool. I said, well, what, what do you want me to do? Tom's the man. <laughs> he said, bring it. He said, I'll send people over. Don't just. Okay. Tom is the man. He, of we course do, he set this we all up. We do a up, podcast, know? right? We yeah. sit down, we have a guest come in or a couple of guests, you know, a couple of people, and we interview them. We talk. Well, I don't, I'm not an interview. I'm not a professional. But um, so we'll talk for an hour or whatever yeah. and, and you know, we, we go home. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we. Yeah, like I said, I'm not an interviewer, so he's like, what, what do you want me to do? He said, just talk to people. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Enjoy, we're enjoy, yeah, enjoy yeah. meeting new folks and, yeah, and making been, new it's friends. It's been enlightening, yeah. it really has. It's been yeah. a wonderful experience. Yeah, so. it was a pleasure meeting you. You as well. Yeah, thank you, you as so well. much. Right. Okay, we're back again, and with us at in, in this segment, this, this wonderful moment, is Eileen Ruiz. Eileen is uh, one of the really big faces and she's a Pittsburgher now, but you came here from someplace else. Yes, originally born and raised in uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, my family are, are Cubans. Okay. Uh, I was first generation born in the States. Really? Mm hmm And uh, basically lived there my whole life, then got accepted to veterinary school. Um, and then I did my fourth year um, clinicals at LSU. And I would always go back and forth to New Orleans, fell in love with New Orleans. It's an amazing uh, yeah. city. Easy and, to do. Oh, um, <laughs> chill. <laughs> chill. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was there for a few years and then um, was dating a guy at that time. And um, he had matched a residency up here at okay. Allegheny General. So okay. we were apart for a month. And this big old hurricane named Hurricane Katrina oh, um, was coming through. It had gone through Miami as a Category 3, so my, mo my mother didn't have any power um, and whatnot. Then while it was, then it was spinning in the coast, the Gulf right, Coast. Right, right. Um, and then it, ma it made its way to New Orleans. At that time, I was working an overnight shift, uh, and I'm a veteran. Um, and uh, I just remember, like, everybody's evacuating and evacuating and people pulling over because their do dogs were having seizures. Like, like right. they, they sense, you know, yeah, something's sure, going on. Sure. And, um, and I just remember, like, it was awful because I had to euthanize them because they couldn't, everybody was just evacuating. There's right, Category right. 5 coming through. There's nothing, right. you know. Um, and I just remember, um, like, I remember, like, the day before I had dinner with one of my good friends in New Orleans. And she, uh, she's always been a little clairvoyant, you know, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. And she's like, Eileen, this hurricane's going to come through and it's going to change all our lives. And I'm like, no. Wow. No. And so... Um, uh, it was, um, let's see, it was, sun so I did its overnight shift from Saturday to Sunday. Okay. Uh, now it's Sunday, August 28th. And I remember it was beautiful blue skies, beautiful blue skies, but traffic, everybody getting out of the city, getting yeah. out, getting out, getting out. So I remember like just getting my animals, mm -hmm. getting my renter's insurance, my computer, a, ba a book bag with clothes. Because I thought the hurricane was just going to veer off like it yeah, did in 2004. It was just be temporary. Yeah, temporary. Yeah, I believe it came up here. Hurricane um, Ivan. Ivan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had some fallout yeah, from yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and so I decided to evacuate to Pittsburgh, um, thinking I could, I was still dating that guy. Oh, because, okay, that's <laughs> yeah, right, right, okay. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, wait a minute. Wait, because, uh, right, because, 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 right, because he's now doing residency here, right, so we were only okay. apart a month. And um, evacuated here thinking that I can go back. You know, home, sure. You know, was gonna play sure. hooky up here for a little bit, and uh, I couldn't go to Miami because my mom didn't have electricity. Okay. So evacuated up here, and um, as we know, Katrina went destroyed. Everything was underwater. Yeah. And I was like, I've got no home. But um, I was called upon the military to see if I would go down and help with these all these animals that were left behind. So Listen, I saw that firsthand. That was mm -hmm. it was devastating. 
uh, for pets, animals, yeah. because they were left behind. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, yeah, that was... It was awful. So, I mean, we, I was, was there. It was awful, yeah. I was there. They allowed me into the city. Then I met other veterinarians, and then okay. we formed... Um, um, like an, a safe ground, and we called it Camp Camp Lucky in um, Saint Bernard Parish. Okay, no, well. And so um, during the day, you know, it was everybody getting together to um, help. You know, I didn't want to be a vet. I was just breaking into people's homes and getting the animals and writing on their walls my cell phone number. Um, and then we all created them Camp Lucky. Then there came Hurricane Rita. <laughs> so we got all these yeah. animals and we put them in um, in violet like. Uh, Further down, like Shamet, sure, um, sure. on a naval ship, they allowed us a space, and we created wow. the animals when Hurricane Rita came. Um, but bottom line, I stayed there for about 11 days, and I was like, I'll just come to Pittsburgh and figure it out. Guy and I break up three months later. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> my, my mom, my it mom's like, yeah, and my mom's like, come home and give me grandkids, because Latinos want <laughs> grandkids really oh, early yeah. in life, right? Oh, yeah. um, and I was like, no. <laughs> so. so uh, got jobs, started working around, and um, five years later, I ended up opening up my own business because I didn't like working for other people where it was all about the money okay. and being poor. I know what it's like, you know. Okay, sure. Um, and there's always alternatives, mm-hmm. you know, instead of you know that you can help an animal out. Right. And the last thing I want is compassion fatigue that I'm going to carry uh, an animal that could be saved and I have to put it down because you don't have the money and the kids are crying. I'm not gonna, I can't sleep like that. You know, okay. so the business um, was born July um, 2010, and we are the top three at the best rated veterinary hospitals, um, which I'm proud. I'm a hard nice. worker. I'm a hard worker. Um, well, obviously. Um, I, know, I love what I do. Where's, I lo- your, where's your clinic? Your hospital? In, in Lawrenceville. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So I love what I do, and, um, and that's my story. How did you... How, how did you get, you know, okay, growing up, Cuban in Miami, in the Cuban community, mm-hmm. it's a very vibrant, it's amazing mm-hmm. community, but you don't, you don't associate that with being a veteran, veterinarian, right? So how did, how did that happen? What led you to that? You just I always, animal lover always, or? my mom would always yell at me because I would always bring strays home and then the house would catch, would catch fleas and whatnot. <laughs> oh, oh, listen, and then, we, we, we have one of you. See, that's my yeah. that's my wife over there. She's lived. My granddaughter Liv is like she's. She would bring home every animal. I mean, she, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, you're you're yeah. you're her like a few yeah. years from now. Yeah. My mom would say, um, when you're old enough, you can have all the animals in the world. Funny thing is that I ended up moving my mom up here, and my mom helped me up, open up the business. Did she? And I was That's like, now awesome. I can have all the mo- all the animals I want. Yeah, there so, you go. Yeah. Oh, that is that is so cool. We yeah. have uh, we have dogs, cats. Uh, there's there's goats. There, there's you you have no idea. I my uh, she just learned how to drive. Um, she's 17, so she's been driving for about a year. So she drives my car a lot. And um, I saw a post on Facebook on her Facebook page, and she was at. Um, I think it was I for one of the stores, and, and she had a goat with her. Mm-hmm. And, we built up. and um, I'm like, don't you have my car? Do you have a goat in my car? Yeah, yeah. So I went in the next day, and there was like little hoof prints on the dashboard. Yeah. yeah. She took the goat for a ride and stopped at this store and got it treats and stuff like that. But that's, I mean, she's, that, you have to have that same kind of passion. Right. You had to have that. And, oh, it's since know, I was a kid. Yeah, and, I was okay. she's always I, I, I couldn't spell veterinarian. I would say I'm a veteran. I want to be a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> so where'd you go to school? LSU. Um, I went to school um, Ross University in St. Okay. Kitts in the Caribbean. Oh, okay. And then okay. I did my fourth year at um, LSU. At LSU. And then I matched internship in New Orleans, and I was like, I'm going to stay here forever. And then uh, that's mm-hmm. after Pittsburgh. It's my favorite city. I, I I've been to most of the major cities in the country. New Orleans yeah. is special. It's awesome. It's it's a special place. Yeah. And much like this. Yep. And that's much how I met this. Tom. Uh, Tom had a puppy named Lucas. And he had, he was like probably, yeah, yeah, Lucas. And he was like, I think maybe I was open two weeks. And he's like, hey, I have a puppy here. And I'm like, okay. And, like, and so I was Lucas's vet the whole time. That is cool. And, and Lucas is basically, really, he's like a rock star. Everybody yeah. knows him. Yep. You know, everybody, you know, it, it, God bless him, he's, he's, he's gone. But, I mean, everybody knew who he was. Yep. It, it, people, there's as many people talking about Lucas as anybody else here. Yep. He was a special kid. That's For a awesome. kid, yeah. That's awesome. Well, and, and Tom had a special relationship with him. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and 
when you get that dog, that pet. Yeah, like, your heart dog. Yeah. When you get that dog that gets you, you know, yeah. oh, that's yeah. something. Yep. That is really something. Yep. You know? And I'm not, listen, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a pet person. Mm. Because simply because I don't have the lifestyle for it. Yeah. Right? I travel a lot. We, we both work. And, and you know, our, our pets are home by themselves all day. Right. You know? And it's funny because when I'll come home, like our dog is, he's, he's, uh, he's probably 11 now. And he's starting to, he, he's slowing starting down to a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and he's, he's, he's probably, he's a wonderful dog. And uh, just kind and gentle and sweet and just the whole thing's been around kids as well. But so I'll come in the door and he just sits there and looks at me. She comes in the door, he loses his mind. He starts screaming and barking. Excited. Loves mama. Doesn't have that vibe, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so what, what what is this what does this mean to you? This what does it mean to you to be a really big fan? I'm honored. Um and um, I don't know, I'm just really honored, you know, and giving back to the community. Um, and um, I'm just proud that, you know, Tom s selected me as one of the, the faces. You have a great mm. story, kiddo. Mm. I mean, you really do. I mean, this is, you know, your journey to get to here today mm -hmm. is, it, it's impressive. You've had to overcome some adversity. And listen, Katrina was a life-changing oh, yeah. situation, right? I mean, that changed so many lives, yep. the trajectory of so many lives. And I mean, you know, what you've done post that, coming out of that, you know, you came here, then you had to yep. break up and all that, but you yep. stayed, and and you're 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 making a difference in this community, your new community, right? And I mean, yeah. we're blessed to have you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I'd like to mention that we are one of the many few. Actually, I probably I'm the only one. Uh, that we are Latino, mm, we speak Spanish. <laughs> we speak there so you go. Like, so like, ah, how do we stick out? Do you have a website or anything? Yeah, that? yeah, 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 yeah. So it's um, it, my practice is called the Big Easy, named nice. after New Orleans. Nice. The Big Easy Animal Hospital. We are located in Lawrenceville. Uh, during the day, we do walk-ins, urgent care, in the afternoons, appointments. Um, website is www.tbeah. Dot com. So, okay. Big Easy Animal Hospital. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about your story. Thank it's you wonderful. for having it's me. wonderful to meet you. Very good to meet you. Thank you so much. Okay, we're back again. Uh, our, joining us, our next guest is the DJ, DJ... Kinetic. Kinetic. Because wow. I make you move, and, baby. And, and yes, <laughs> you can make you... Listen, people are just dancing. It's it's like, it, it, this is great, man. You got, a, you got the vibe going here, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love curing an appropriate vibe for a space and for an art show I think it should be something that you can listen to and enjoy is, but yeah. not focus great. on as the main point you know like because the art is the main you point I, I wanted to accent right. it you know and yeah. I think that's how you should approach things you know um, especially like learning how to read a crowd you know mm -hmm. right there's so many different types of people coming in here so I want to play something that is somewhat universally sure. acceptable and enjoyable and that always takes me back to jazz influence you know right, so right. i well, love i'm a jazz guy man oh you're, yeah you're, you're you're talking my language love brother. it love it there you go mm -hmm. now, and you know that's a that's a skill man that, you know being able to read body language read a room like that that's that's a skill no matter what you do in life that's going to serve you well because that's not everybody can do that oh i'm in sales so <laughs> what kind of sales what do you do uh i am an adt install tech Really? Yeah, so I you, I secure families. There you go. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is your son. How long have you been a DJ? Um, since I was 14. Is that right? Actually, yeah. So 13 years now. Yeah, I started playing out at shows that I couldn't even legally get into. <laughs> they, they would sneak me in, and uh, yeah, a lot of people, you know, took me under their wing, made sure I was safe and sure. and uh, focusing on the music rather than the other things. Right. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. Always in Pittsburgh here? You from Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm from Cranberry originally. Oh, okay. I, w I went to Slippery Rock for school. And then yeah, Good after after college, I came out to the city because I hated driving home an hour after my gig, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah made out to the city and I love cool. it out here. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is great because, you know, I'm hearing it all evening, right? Mm -hmm. It's been right there, but 
again, it's not overpowering anymore, yeah. right? People are still able to talk. They're able to just go around and enjoy the art mm -hmm. and have conversations. Oh, yeah. It's good stuff, man. That's and, a skill. I mean, that's how you need to approach it, you know? Um, for this type of thing. Like, I have sure. a gig after this where I'm the main event, you know? So I'm going all in. But for this, it's Tom and, and the art, you know? And I just wanted to curate an appropriate vibe for that. So it, sure. it's just like... A more enjoyable, immersive experience. You, you know? did well. You did well, and you got a gig after much. this. I'm, I'm going home, going to bed. <laughs> yeah, I play twelve to one. <laughs> do you really? Yeah. <laughs> do you, want, do you, have a, you have a website? Huh? Have I a website? have Instagram and Facebook and stuff. How do we find you on social media? Um, kinetic K I N E T I K N R G, like okay. energy. Right. It's dude. <laughs> dude, you're killing me, man. You got to you got to change your name to that. That's got to be your name. Legal, yeah, I legal. love it. Make it legal, man. I love it. That's a that, that's that's great marketing, right? Kinetic energy. That's that is that's really cool. Well, thank you. Because thank you, you want to have that energy, right? Oh right? yeah. And, and even even this, you, you it's low key, but it's still energy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that you're energized in the room. And oh yes. Yeah. It doesn't have to be bam 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 in your face. No. Right? It can be. It most certainly does not. It, it can be, be Miles tasteful. Davis. Miles Davis can oh, energize. Oh yeah. Room, I just right? played some Rick James like two tracks ago. There you go. You know? There you go. <laughs> right into Mac Miller after that. So. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I appreciate you. Oh, I, I love it so much. You know, I, I bleed music, and I think that's why I've been doing it and Please. getting booked for so. I played piano for five years. I played a little bit of saxophone in school. Um, but once I grabbed onto that, I just gravitated towards it. You know, I, I just loved it. The, I mean, I'm a narcissist, so the instant gratification <laughs> was a real good thing. You know, I didn't have to work too hard for it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, I, I dove into that and I just immersed myself in it. And um, yeah, just I steadily keep pushing myself, trying to not become complacent in the art because it's really, really easy to do that. Yeah. With, with DJing especially, because you can get away with sure. acting like you're doing a lot. Who's your favorite artist? Favorite artist? Um, Pink Floyd was my first favorite band. Really? Yeah. I, we, my dad and I actually had tickets to go see Roger Waters last night, or two nights ago, was it? Yeah. And uh, after two years of waiting, we found out they were fake tickets. So no that, way! Yeah, yeah. That was a bummer. But uh, I'm dead set on seeing him before he stops touring, because yeah. that, well, that was a huge yeah. part of my childhood. Your dad hat must be my mom, around my age, or maybe a little bigger. Uh, he's 54, or 64, excuse me, 64. Oh, my age. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he has great taste in music. Um, he was playing guitar my whole childhood. Well, he has to, man. I mean, we grew Listen, that was probably the biggest blessing, and I'm sure he'll tell you the same thing, is growing up when we did. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. All that. Zeppelin. That was new. That was oh, new. yeah. You know, I remember watching the Beatles debut on Ed Sullivan's show that when I was is a little crazy. kid with my parents. Right, because my mom's very young. Right? Mm -hmm. She's she was happy when she was twenty. So, it, 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 my dad was older. He was like seven years older. There. So I had my dad, who was a jazz guy. Right. So we had Dave Brubeck and Miles Davis and you know oh, John yeah. Coltrane around all the time. And then my mother was this little hippie chick, right? So she's mm -hmm. into the Beatles and the Stones. I love that. Stuff, right. So I had all of that stuff going. On, oh yeah. You know. That's awesome that you had like that well-rounded music yeah. experience yeah. coming up, and. That's the art, that's the shame of it is that the forefront of music at that time was very impressive mm -hmm. and sure. cutting edge and now it seems like more of like you've industry plants you know it's oh, but you know what, more to there's, sell there's you know? those acts out there that you will be 50 years from now in your 70s telling your grandkids about oh yeah you know what I mean and there there's there's a Beatles a Rolling Stones that they're, they're they're there now so who do you think is of that caliber um, you know, right I, now, I don't know. You know, because I, I, I don't think I could probably name five artists right now. Really? Do you know what I mean? And, and it's like, because I'm, I, I have some for you. I'm in that old, I'm, I'm in that old school, man. Uh, try out Tame Impala. Okay. If you haven't heard of them, um, it's like psychedelic indie rock. If if you're into the bands, psychedelic you're, indie. That's me, Terry. You know uh, that. Come on. Very very good. Psychedelic indie rock. Yeah. So, Call Chloe and tell her we're, we're going. We're going to get to go to his concert. One thing that I've noticed, um, some of my favorite artists over the last couple of years are one-man bands. You know, mm -hmm. it's just somebody in their home studio with a digital audio workshop, and they're yeah. playing every single instrument and just like 
recording it one by one right. rather than relying on a band. Sure. And I mean, you can't break up with yourself, you know? So, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. You can and, try, but it's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to keep following yourself around and yell. Yeah, okay, exactly. Stuff. And that's the case with Tame Impala. Um, another wonderful artist, Baird, B-A-I-R-D. I've actually heard, uh, I've heard of that. I've heard some of that. He's wonderful. Uh, yeah, and I, I keep seeing this pattern of these artists who just really want to do the solo thing. And cool. I think that the ability to produce that music on your own, in your home, for a reasonable cost is really opening the gates to a ton of savants. Yeah, you know, who, yeah, who yeah, right. really don't work well with others, but they know right. their vision. Right. And I love that, you know. It's awesome, man. Love it. Listen, hey, great to talk to you. Great to meet yes, you. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming over. That's, that's cool stuff. Keep doing what you do. Oh, can I plug one thing real quick? You can plug anything you so, want, So, uh, Bridges. Uh, it's a new um, uh, restaurant opening. Uh, my friend Kevin Safner, who owned James Street Gastropub. Okay, sure. Uh, he is running that joint, and we're going to be hosting like a lo-fi, chill lounge music night there called Swoon. Okay. Uh, sometime oh, cool. in August. So yeah. Okay. Where, Bridges, where do we find it? Where's it at? You know, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a really good friend. Uh, he, is, he is. No, I'm just terrible at directions. I, I don't have any, any idea where I am any of the time. Oh, I don't know what part of Pittsburgh cool. this is right now. I just know I'm here. It's Pittsburgh. It's, it's Pittsburgh. All right, dude. Thank right, you, buddy. man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good Thank to you meet so you. much. Yeah.